What's going on guys? Today I have a video on a topic that I feel is not talked about very much in the world of the Hackintosh, and that's how the Hackintosh stands the test of time. Now, because the Hackintosh scene is still pretty new, not a lot of people have had a lot of time with it. I've had almost two and a half years on this same machine that you can't see but is in fact right down there, while most people probably have only had theirs for a couple months now to maybe a year. And while a lot of people have had a lot of success, me included, building their Hackintosh systems, that's not quite enough for a lot of you guys that are on the fence about building one. A lot of you guys want to know, well, will this machine really last me, you know, just more than a couple months as a little fun experiment? Can I actually do my serious work on this computer for years to come? And that's what this video is going to cover. Like I said, I've had my computer running for about two and a half years now. I built it all myself, I've since upgraded a few components, and I'm going to tell you guys the experience that I've had with my Hackintosh for the last two and a half years. Now before going on, I want to say that this video was actually made possible by a viewer comment I got this past week. YouTube user DreamDancer11 writes, A Hackintosh presentation is like the last minute of a happily ever after romantic comedy. Nobody knows how the couple stands the test of time. After reading that comment, I really couldn't agree more. There's really nowhere you can go on the internet that just has a lot of people that have been in the Hackintosh world for a long time and are posting their experiences. Like I said earlier, this is such a young thing that those experiences just really haven't been posted. So that explains this video, and now let's go ahead and get started. So just to give you guys an idea of how long I've been in the Hackintosh world and you know my experiences with the Hackintosh, I started Hackintoshing back in October of 2010. At the time, I had just finished my last year of high school, I was going into college, and that's how I got all the money for my system. It was kind of a graduation slash entry to college present, and I used all my money to build my Hackintosh. Now at the time, I was really, really torn whether to go the Hackintosh route and venture off into something totally new, or if I just wanted to go you know, with an iMac or like a Mac Mini or a pre-built system. And you know, me being a computer guy, going to college for MIS, getting really into computers and things, I of course went the Hackintosh route. And at the time, Snow Leopard was the main operating system. Leopard was kind of a thing of the past, but still somewhat new. But Snow Leopard is really all the rage. And Snow Leopard was just really awesome back in the day, having you know all the multiple desktops and being optimized more and more. It was a really good operating system. But that just gives you guys sort of an idea of how long I've had my machine. It's seen three major Apple operating systems. It's seen Snow Leopard, Lion, and Mountain Lion. Now this is the part right here that I really want to stress. In that two and a half years, it has literally handled all of my work that I've thrown at it. Whether we're talking schoolwork, you know, running Microsoft Office, you know, all that school stuff, or doing all of my online work, you know, that's FTPing into websites, that's producing YouTube videos all the time. So even just that, that's the more intensive work, you know, all the video editing, messing with audio. I've even thrown some pretty good games at this machine, and it literally does handle everything. On a day-to-day -day basis, I literally couldn't tell that, you know, it was a Hackintosh. And for a while, if you've been following my videos, I had a Power Mac G5 case. You know, I actually put my machine inside of a Power Mac G5 case, and it looked like a Mac Pro. And if, you're, if you didn't even know that it was a Hackintosh, if you just came in the room and started using it, you really would have no idea if it was a Hackintosh or a Mac Pro, because the performance was literally right there. Now in terms of bugs and you know system crashes and things, back in the day it was a little more unstable. Back in the days of Snow Leopard, I would remember you know maybe once or twice a week, I would open up a finder window and my machine would just suddenly lock up. It would freeze altogether and I'd have to reboot it. Little things like that in Snow Leopard, they were buggy. But what's happened over the last couple years is actually very interesting. Apple used to use the PC, uh, the power PC chips, and then they kind of used you know, the Core 2 Duos, and that's where the Snow Leopard was. It was kind of in that Core 2 Duo migrating to the newer Core i3, i5, and i7 chips. No, it was kind of like in that transition. And so things were a little bit buggier back then. But now, like I said, over the last couple years, if you look at any desktop or notebook PC to any desktop or notebook Mac, you'll notice that they have the same exact processors in them, Core i3, i5, and i7. They're the most popular chips on the market. And now because those are on both sides of the market, the hardware is more identical than ever. And that's why the Hackintosh works as well as it does today. Those little freezing bugs and all these little weird things that used to happen in Snow Leopard, I honestly can't even remember the last time they've happened on my computer. And now I want to make one more big point in this video, and that's, you know, as time goes on, your machine isn't going to be the fastest, it's going to get slower, the competition around it is going to improve, and now what are you going to do? Rather than buy a new computer, you're really going to want to upgrade. And with a Hackintosh, that's probably one of the biggest pros of the entire thing, is that you can get in there and you can customize and upgrade anything you'd like. 
Say for example you buy you know, one of the new iMacs, those razor thin iMacs or a Mac mini. Those you really cannot upgrade much. You can't get in there and upgrade the graphics card because you know it's all on board. You don't have any PCI slots or anything like that. Really the only thing you can upgrade is the memory. And even that's kind of going away with these ultra thin designs. It's kind of just like glued on the board and it's just turning into kind of a mess. But on the Hackintosh, you can really get in there and customize your processor. You can customize any component that you want from the case to the motherboard and everything in between. And in those last two and a half years, especially me being the, as big of a geek as I am, you better believe that I've gone in there and I've upgraded many things. I've upgraded everything from you know the hard drives, solid state drives, graphics cards, even the case that it sits in. Everything about that machine, I've probably tweaked at one point or another. And that's something that you really just can't do on a Mac. And some people, you know, they just really don't want to even bother with that stuff. Building the computer, maintaining it, having to sort of figure out, I guess I'll say figure out, how to do, you know, updates, what kernel extensions to install, which honestly is easier than it ever has been. But I understand that some people, they just don't want to put up with that. And for those people, you probably should get a Mac. But for anyone else that wants to learn a little bit about computers, you really don't have to worry about, you know, your machine only being good for a month because it can last you a long time. And I guess this is the last big thing. You have to do your research. You can't just expect to go on Newegg and click, you know, any little thing, put it in your cart and have it shipped and work. You really have to do your research. You know, you have to know what chipsets are compatible, what socket of a processor you want. Make sure your motherboard fits that socket. That's a very common mistake. You know, make sure that if you want a solid state drive versus a hard drive, if that hard drive you're using, say, has 4K sectors or not, because that's totally different. So these little things, you have to make sure that they're going to work. And if you do your research, you will absolutely get a great result that will, in fact, last you a long time. So when everything is said and done, based off everything I just told you guys, based off my experience the last two and a half years with this machine and building all the other machines for my clients, it's very safe to say that my next computer will be a Hackintosh. It wasn't that long ago that I wanted a legitimate Mac Pro because you know I didn't want to deal with X and Y, the little bugs, but now that those don't really exist all that often anymore, the Hackintosh is a definite way to go for a geek like me that likes to upgrade their components. They like to get in there and change things and figure out little things that don't work when they do happen. The Hackintosh is a great solution for me. It's one that's lasted me a long time. This computer still has a lot of life left in it. And when it comes time that I do need to upgrade my computer, the little, I guess, inconveniences that a Hackintosh does bring, they're worth the experience and the price tag. So be sure to let me know whether you think your Hackintosh has or will stand the test of time, however long that may be to you, uh, whether your next machine, based on your experience, will be a Hackintosh or a real Mac or even a Windows PC. Whatever the case, let me know in the comments down below. I'm at CPUKid on Twitter. Also be sure to check out RoachTechnology.com and I hope to see you guys back here soon.